All right, welcome everyone for being here. We're so excited. Um, my name is Brigitte Curry. I am one of the school counselors here at Chief Lushai Schools. Um, throughout our time today, we will be sharing our screen and taking our uh, screen off because we would like for you to be able to see the faces of the people who are here with us today. Um, we are meeting with Kawachi Counseling Center, so we're very grateful for them to be with us today. We have the honor of having them share their insight and um, give us some ideas of what we can do to manage stress and anxiety. Um, so Lejea, if you want, we can go ahead and take the screen down. And before we get started, um, we wanna say thank you to those who've joined us. Um, we're glad that you are here. And we will be, um, just some logistics before we do uh, introduce ourselves. We will be having the screens on so you can see who is talking to you guys. And throughout your time here, we do ask that if you want to share anything, if you have questions, that you please use the chat feature, which you will find on the right side. You can privately message if you click on the name of the person, or you can share it out to everybody. And we will be monitoring that chat throughout this time. So if there are questions that do come up, we will do our best at the end to answer those questions. We do ask that everybody checks their, um, their microphones. And during our time, uh, make sure that it's on that red microphone so that it is muted. We wanna honor um, those who are sharing and just with any background noise, sometimes those things can they happen, you know, we're working from our offices or we might be from home. And so just double check and make sure that that microphone button is red and muted um, so that we can uh, hear what our guests have to say. Um, one more thing I wanted to share is that this is open to our CLS families, staff members and students. So just keeping that in mind, if at any point there are questions that anyone has that are specific to themselves, um, or to their child. Uh, we do ask that you reach out to your child's um, school counselor or you can reach out directly to myself or the other school counselors and we will make sure that we connect you with um, any need that you may have or answer those questions uh, in the future. Um, and I think that I have gone over all of the logistics. Um, so again, thank you for being here. And we want to say thank you to Kawachi for being here. Um, my name again is Brigitte Curry. I am one of the school counselors. I'm going to ask that our school counselors share out and introduce themselves really quickly. And then we're going to have those from Kawachi Counseling introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Martina Iñiguez. I'm a counselor for students PK through two. I'm Trevor Anderson. I am a school counselor on the secondary sides, grades six through 12. Hi, I am Legea Jackson, and I'm also one of the secondary counselors, grades six through 12. Thank you. And then thank you so much for Kawachi Counseling for being here. Would you guys go ahead and um, share your who you are and then briefly what your role is with Kawachi? I'll start. Um Atslachil, we at Chalap, Donnell Reed Seats Das, Bialish Pabs Chud, and I work at Kwachi Counseling Center. I'm the director and have been here for 17 years going on. And um, this is this is my home tribe. So welcome everyone. My name is Donnell and um, Reed, and I'll let the rest of the team go. It's good to see you all here. Hi, I'm Michelle Yoder. I am a counselor at Kawachi as well as the, uh, I supervise the clinical team. And I've been here almost 18 years. Hi, I'm Glorinda Ware. I'm one of the counselors from Kawachi Counseling as well. I've been here a little, gonna be going on three years pretty soon, so yay. My name is Lauren Palais, and I'm one of the counselors at Kawachi, and I've been here for about two and a half years. I'm Sarah Bennett, and I'm a counselor at Kawachi, and I've been here just over 11 years now. Atsla Hale. I'm Jennifer Dakota. I've been serving the Puyallup Tribal community for 24 years now, and I'm 
So glad the community is joining us today. I'm Selma Suzuki Ashlachel, and I am one of the, I'm a licensed marriage family therapist. I've been at Kawachi a little over 10 years, and I'm very pleased to be here today with you. Thank you for coming. Alicia Bailey, I'm one of the counselors at Kawachi, and I'm going on five years. I think that was all of us. All right, thank you so much. And one other logistic that I wanted to just uh, share with everybody is that there is there should be a an option where if you wanted to look specifically at the person who is speaking in Zoom, you can change. If you go up to the top, you can change it from speaker view to gallery. So if you're wanting to see everybody, that is an option to you um, in how you set that up for yourself during our session. So we are going to go ahead and get started and our school counselors will be asking questions to the Kawachi counseling team and they will be taking turns sharing some answers some, to some of the biggest questions that we've been hearing from the community in regards to stress and anxiety. So we're going to go ahead with the first question. Okay, that's me. I get the honor of asking the first question. Um, thanks for being here. I really appreciate uh, your time and your 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 experience um, the first question that we want to open up with perhaps Sarah could just tell us a little bit about uh, the difference between stress and anxiety sure um, I think it's really important to kind of understand that they are two different things um, there's a lot of stress that happens in our life that uh, is basically something where we need to act upon it we have pressures that we need to do something to Kind of work with them or achieve a goal that stress can be really good stress and it can be um, not so good stress i think uh, the holidays are definitely a good example of the good stress it it's uh, a lot going on and there's a lot that we need to get done but uh, there's also some really fun parts to it so that would be an example of stress whereas anxiety is more of a reaction to that. And sometimes we get uh, our thoughts in a sort of worried mode about whatever that stress is or what might happen uh, from that stress. And that can become a little bit of a problem if we get too uh, much of that worrying and anxiety going on. It can cause us to have some really difficult times managing the stress. Uh, so it's really about kind of understanding that there's stress uh, going on in our lives a lot and we have some choices about how we handle it and how we think about it and uh, yeah. All right, thank you. Um, the second part of that question, um, Lorinda, maybe you could touch upon the signs and symptoms of both stress and anxiety. Sure. So some of the signs and symptoms of stress and anxiety, I'll go ahead and cover the stress part first. There's a lot of physical signs and cognitive signs of stress. And so some of them are like having lack of energy, upset stomach, maybe diarrhea, constipation, nausea, headaches. Um, people tend to experience frequent colds and infections. They have um, a loss in interest in activities, may even experience dry mouth. Um, clenched jaw, grinding of teeth, um, inability to focus, increased use or have a desire to use different things such as substances to cope negatively with what they're experiencing, uh, fidgeting, pacing, and nail biting are some of the things that I found for um, stress. And then some of the um, symptoms for anxiety, they kind of overlap. So there's some of them that I've already mentioned, but I'm gonna go ahead and just you know, give you the symptoms for anxiety as well is restlessness or feeling keyed up or um, on edge, fatigue, inability, muscle tension, sleep disturbances, such as difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or even restlessness. And so those are um, the symptoms. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next questions that have come up. Okay. 
Okay, um, Jennifer, what are some healthy ways to manage stress and anxiety? Well, what I want to introduce and share with the community is something that we're all very um, connected to, and that's the sacred breath of life and the importance of practicing breathing. We know that one of the most effective techniques for immediate stress relief is pausing yourself to honor the gift from Creator and our mothers, which is that breath of life we all carry. When we were all born, we took our first breath. It brought us into the life outside of our mother's womb. Yet it's the very thing we as human beings withhold and struggle with during times of stress or anxiety. Breathing slows our heart rate. We know this. It reduces our blood pressure and it reduces the fight or flight response we experience when we feel anxious. We all have and can share this sacred resource. Doesn't matter what our age is, little children, adolescents, young adults, adults, elders, the sacred breath of life. Pausing and purposely practicing breathing helps us tune out the external distractions in our life and reduces production of the stress hormone, which is cortisol. And we wanna release that hormone. That cortisol, we don't wanna carry it, we wanna release it a bit stuck in us and we gotta do that with some proper breathing. Redirecting those stressful and distressing thoughts that you might be experiencing by intentionally pausing to breathe connects us to the now, like this present moment that we're in, just grounds us in the now, in the immediate. There are two phrases that I like to use with all ages that are great suggestions, easy to remember, to support you using your personal pause button to remind yourself to stop and simply breathe. And you might be familiar with these phrases. One is called smelling the flowers and blowing out the candles. And the other one is smelling the soup and cooling it off. And these phrases are easy to remember. Uh, they encourage us to breathe in through our noses and exhale throughout, through our mouths. Just one deep inhale and then an exhale out through your mouth. And it has the added benefit of a visual cue, you know, to help you pause yourself and observe that you're breathing. Smelling the flowers, blowing out the candles, you know, visualizing those images and smelling the soup and cooling it off and visualizing that image. I just wanna remind everyone to honor yourself by noticing your breath. It's connected to our hearts. That breathing, pausing to purposefully breathe slowly with intention and perhaps on your exhale, exhale visually like blowing away anything that you're carrying within yourself that is stressful or distressing. So, you know, my suggestion for this gathering today is honoring that sacred breath of life, pausing yourself and intentionally breathing to release whatever stressors or anxious thoughts and feelings that you're experiencing. Thank you, Jennifer. Tanisha, what about stress around the holidays? What are some healthy ways to manage stress and anxiety? Definitely the holidays are a time of more demands. Um, when we, depending on our traditions, um, if we celebrate the holidays, we might find ourselves um, cleaning more, shopping, um, and entertaining, traveling, spending time with extended relatives, and um, having to think about um, what, what all we want to be able to accomplish. And we have to determine and decide what we can do and what we want to do. Um, and then there might be additional stress due to the COVID-19 spreading. We might be worried um, about our family members, our loved ones, not being able to spend time with them um, or them not being well, getting sick, and so that might be compounding our stress. We might be experiencing grief um, because we've lost loved ones. And so honoring them can be important. And at this time during the holidays, uh, we have to really think about what can we do in terms of our budget um, and, and think about that we might wanna not put ourselves in a bind after the holidays. Uh, we still have to 
live. Um, and then maybe not saying yes, when we should say no um, to certain things and certain projects, um, cause that can make us feel overwhelmed um, and stressed. And then if we can't say no, uh, specifically like with work tasks, then we might think about and consider what can we take off of our plate. And then we don't wanna abandon our healthy habits during, that, during this time. Um, we want to continue to eat well. Sometimes we can think about having a, small, a healthy small sna snack before the holiday meal so that we don't overindulge. Um, getting plenty of sleep and exercise kind of helps with trying to meet demands. Um, not overindulging in tobacco, alcohol, you know, substances, because um, those deplete us. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we just need to take a, a breather um, and have undistracted time for ourselves um, while we're trying to do everything. And then because we are spending time with um, relatives, maybe we would need to set aside our differences. Um, during events and uh, think about when we want to have those discussions at a more appropriate time and um, not expecting family to do more than that than they're able to um, and then consider that they may be experiencing holiday stress as well thank you tanisha So we will go ahead and ask our third question and Martina will lead us in that one. Okay, um, welcome everyone. It's great to be here. I'm learning a great deal uh, about stress and anxiety. <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, the third question is to, um, is Lauren, um, what are routines that can help us maintain balance and set healthy boundaries? Thank you. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can do to help us stay grounded. A lot of it's been mentioned like breath work um, and some things that Tanisha has mentioned. So um, one thing I like to think about is routine, especially for kids, especially for younger kids, being able to have some sort of routine in our day, even if we're stuck at home, even if we're working from home, schooling from home, how can we make sure that we are, that especially kids know what to expect, what's gonna happen, um, what's going on is always really useful to de decrease anxiety and other stressors. Um, the other one is good sleep. You know, sleep hygiene is really important. So we can think about trying to go to bed at the same time every day, minimizing screens and lights and input before bed so that we can sleep really well and get really good deep sleep. Um, not sleeping too much. Sometimes we're feeling down, people can start sleeping a lot and that can become problematic. So making sure that we're sleeping really well, sleeping um, deeply um, and getting the sleep we need. And there's lots of resources online around tips for sleep hygiene. And I'm sure we have some too that we could pass along. Um, Tanisha mentioned some things about nutrition as well. Are we getting the vitamins and supplements our body needs to feel healthy, to feel energetic, to feel awake? Um, so that can be, are we drinking enough water? Um, I know when I haven't had enough to drink or eat, if, I, if I'm forgetting to eat, I kind of get hangry, you know, I get a little on edge. So, and that always increases other stressors that are going on and my focus and stuff like that. So making sure that we're eating well, we're eating regularly, um, we're eating nutritious things. Um, that can also, you know, go in line with, are we drinking too much caffeine? Uh, do we notice if we drink a lot of caffeine that we feel more on edge sometimes or sugar or any other substances that can increase stress and energy and, and not getting sleep? Um, some other routines could be increasing movement and exercise. So, any time throughout the day that we can get up, do some stretches, get our body kind of more relaxed. I know that when I'm stressed, like even kind of right now, I kind of like lift my shoulders up to my ears. And so making sure that we're kind of taking that deep breath and getting our body um, not as stressed as it can be. Trying to get some exercise, going for a walk, whatever you can, some yoga. 
Um, and then other sort of forms of self-care are really good routines. If, if reading, if you can increase reading, if you enjoy that, or being creative, or being in nature, or listening to music, whatever kind of fills that, that um, just that your cup makes you feel really good and makes you feel grounded is really important. Meditation, stretches, you know, all those sort of things. Um, another routine could be any spiritual routines or smudging, any religious practices that are important to you to help you feel ground, stay grounded and feel good. And then also uh, leaning on your community when you can, being able to talk with people, connect with people, um, so you don't feel so isolated and, and stressed out. Um, so increasing boundaries, tips around increasing boundaries, which I think can be really hard, especially this year. There's a lot of, um, you know, uh, COVID restrictions going on and a lot of people that are having, you know, different feelings and thoughts on that that are creating some conflict within families. I'm sure we've all heard it. I've heard it with my clients, I've heard it with my friends. So just being able to really kind of tune into your own needs and your own desires, your own values. Um, Tanisha already talked about like learning, saying no, you know, when saying no, when you need to say no, listening to your own emotions, what's coming up for me, what does my family need? What am I able to do? What's the most respectful response for others and for myself? Um, how can I be assertive in, in those areas? And the last thing I'd like to say is I always kind of like to steal from Brene Brown. She says that um, the most boundary people are the most compassionate people, which I think is really true because you're able to say no when you mean no and yes when you mean yes, and you can do it with kindness and empathy and, and compassion in, an, in a loving way. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got for that. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Trevor. You want to take us with the next question? I sure do. Um, this next question is for Michelle. Michelle, it's great to see you. Um, this next question has to do with change and coping with change. And um, our students and family are experiencing a great deal of change with the COVID pandemic. What advice would you give for coping with change? Uh, so some of my ideas about coping with change include first accepting that change is happening. So, and then asking yourself what, what's in, within your control and what is with, um, not in your control. So again, the question is what can I control and what is, what is outside of my control? Um, and then if it's outside your control, work at letting it go. There's nothing you can do about it, so just let it go. Um, remember also that children are watching the adults around them and how they're coping with change, the changes that are happening. I mean, we're all experiencing change. It's pretty obvious. Um, and so it's important that as the that you can then take care of those that you care for. Um, and along with that, praise before judgment. Praise yourself for the successes that you're having. Don't judge the things that aren't going well. We all are making adjustments. And so, you know, let that be okay. That, hey, you know, this didn't go perfect, but we tried really hard. Um, another idea is to uh, build up your own positive coping skills. So, um, I like to use the metaphor of a basket when I talk about building my own, you know, kind of toolkit of coping skills and knowing what's in that basket and how it works for me. And, um, and then being able to remind myself of, you know, the tools that are there so that I can use them. Um, there's lots of resources through Kawachi, through Chief Leshai, as well as through the internet. Um, you can Google coping skills and you will get a whole lot of information. You can also go on YouTube and you'll probably even get some instructional videos as well as remember there are phone apps to address coping skills. So you can download apps that um, I have an app called calm and I have it set on the timer and at noon every day I get this little notification and my calm app is is offering me another um, Relaxation tool. And uh, sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't. That's okay. 
<laughs> you know, again, praise yourself for what you do instead of judging yourself for what you don't get done or for what, you know, doesn't go perfectly. Um, let's see. Also, creativity has been shown to be a really great mood booster. And it doesn't have to be difficult. You don't have to have tons of supplies. You can sit down at the table and color together. You can be silly together. Um, you can um, play with Play-Doh, tell a story, you know, start a story and have the next person add to it. There's all kinds of creative things that you can do to just um, get out of your head and get into a moment of creativity. Um, so creating a routine that fits with the change that you're experiencing can also be important. And I think a great idea is to take those who are around you, um, gather together. So I mean those people who are in your household and um, do a little brainstorming. Let everybody have a say and offer some options for the schedule that you're trying to create to accommodate the changes that you're going through. Um, Creativity also can come into looking at, okay, what was important to me before this change? And so, for example, exercise was important to me, um, but now my gym is closed. How am I going to get the exercise that I need? So maybe you exercise at home. Maybe you go for a walk in your neighborhood and, you know, be careful of social distancing and take your mask along in case you run into your neighbor. Um, also, but there's, I mean, there's things you can do at home. Dance, have a dance party with your kids. Um, you know, throw on the YouTube and look up some, some dance videos that um, you all enjoy and get your groove on. Um, you can also, there's many ways to stay in touch. Um, we can't gather in the same way that we like to, but there's Zoom, there's the telephone, um, one of our clients shared with their counselor that they were playing catch across the fence with their neighbor. So um, that person, you know, they were each in their yard and they threw the ball back and forth. Um, definitely social distancing, but also getting some fresh air, some activity and a little connection with their neighbor. So sometimes creativity is just well, I shouldn't say some. I feel like creativity is really required right now for us to um, kind of recharge ourselves. And then the last one that I will share, but definitely not the least important, is gratitude. And that's remembering what is around you that you're grateful for. What are the blessings that you have? And I mean, I know one of my sisters um, has shared with me that she has she has two young adult sons and a teenage daughter and you know as you might imagine they had all kind of started going their own directions and once the um, restrictions were put into place they found that every night they were having dinner together and that was a really significant um, change that they all appreciated so sometimes and often you know you've heard the silver lining in, within the cloud. There is a silver lining and there are things that we can look at in our lives and feel blessed by and still maintain that gratitude. Gratitude helps us um, keep from becoming discouraged. And um, that's it. That's what I have to, to contribute today. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. And we do have one more question um, that we have planned for you all. And just a reminder, if there are questions that come to mind for those who are, are listening, you are welcome to add them to the chat. And um, if we don't get them today, we will definitely look at those questions and have some answers for you in the future. And our last question is for you, Danelle. Uh, when should someone seek support? and what resources and opportunities are available? Oh, Danelle, your microphone is muted. I do that all the time, dang it. And we've been doing Zoom for nine months. Okay, so hi everyone. All right, so great question. Um, so what I was saying is um, that the first part of the question is when should I ask for help? And I would say any time. Um, 
you know, I, I think the team has provided a lot of things that you can do individually as a person. And if you feel like you have exhausted all of those creative things that you have inside of you and that creator gave to you and gave to all of us, um, you know, is the, uh, again, ability to breathe. It's the first thing we do, the breath of life. Um, and then all of those other things and skills and abilities and interests um, that we have, if you feel like you've exhausted all of those and you're still not feeling like yourself and you're still feeling down or you're feeling that anxious, stressed, kind of worried, having that worried mind that we heard about, that's when you want to reach out. And you can reach out um, informally to people who are in your, you know, closest circle. You can reach out to your best friend, um, to your cousins, to your grandma, aunties, uncle, um, you know, so your closest people to you. And if, and if they're not available, um, then you want to start looking at, um, you know, the other resources that are available to you. And that kind of gets into the second part of the question. Who is and what is available to you if you um, if you do feel like you need help and um, so you know first you always want to look inward um, creator gave us so much and uh, we do carry you know um, memories of our ancestors we carry the spirit of our ancestors and our people and um, that can really take us a long ways but sometimes we do need a little extra help and um, and so actually so in the chat for those of you who are still on I'm going to share um, all of these I'm going to go through some resources that may sound familiar to you they may be new um, so I've just popped them into the chat for you you can copy and paste the phone numbers and the websites uh, and then there's a you know, we've already heard from um, a couple of folks go on, you know, go online and Google some stuff, but um, certainly feel free to reach out to our team. You've met um, not quite the full uh, Kawachi Counseling Center team. You met about half of us today. And so please feel free to reach out to us or the treatment center. And the phone number is, is listed in the chat. It's 253-593-0247. And we are here for you. You know, um, we're open every day. The tribe is open and um, we're, we're available and ready to um, be that extra support for you if you need it. Uh, if you find that you are not able to get to Kawachi during our open hours and um, another option for you 24 hours a day that's a really important number to kind of keep handy is the Pierce County Crisis Line uh, and that also I listed into the chat and we'll also make these um, numbers available. I think we'll, we'll add them onto Chief Leshai's um, page somewhere where you can find them as well, maybe on the link to this uh, recording. And another really great resource for uh, the other counseling centers that are in our area, if you wanted to try maybe a location that's closer to you, um, you can go to Kids Mental Health PierceCounty.org, and that's a website. And it's a brand new website that just has been getting developed uh, starting about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer, and it's got a whole team of people who have been working together to make resources more available for children and families. So that's an excellent resource. You'll want to go there. Uh, and then I also um, want to mention the Native Youth Crisis Line, and that is uh, connected to the National Resource uh, Suicide Prevention Line, but it is specifically for Native youth. So please do call that if you find yourself in crisis um, and it's late at night and you can't get through to a local resource. There's always somebody on this line 24 hours a day. And that phone number is 1-877-209-1266. And, um, and I, that, that's kind of the, the big ones that I wanted to hit. But again, just reminding um, everyone on this call is that you have so much strength and you bring so much power into this world. The minute you come here um, from you know seven generations back, you're carrying all of that knowledge and strength uh, with you and um, and we are here to support you. So thanks for that question. Thank you, Danelle. And thank you all, all of you from Kawachi who joined us and answered those questions. I know at this point we're a few minutes over. Um, and so it doesn't appear that we had any additional questions in the chat. Um, but if there are questions that do come up from any of you who are with us today or um, in the future, if you're watching this, please do reach out. Um, you're more than welcome to reach out to your school counselors. And again, we gave those resources to you from Danelle um, that you can reach out to Kawachi Counseling Center um, and the additional resources that we will have available to you all. Um, so you can uh, connect with those as well. Um, so we don't have any additional questions. So we're gonna wrap it up. 
Um, but we just wanted to say thank you again to everyone from Kawachi. We appreciate you being here and working with you. There's so much that you do to support the families here at Chief Leshi Schools and our students, and we're very grateful for that. Um, thank you for those who joined us today. And uh, keep an eye out for any upcoming opportunities. Today was the first session, but we are hoping that we might be able to do more uh, information sessions like this. So if you do have ideas or if there's things that you are hoping to hear more about from us in Kawachi Counseling, please reach out and let us know. Um, and we will see what we can do in the future. With that, again, thank you. And uh, we just wanna say, um, let's see, I'm gonna practice my uh, Toshutsi, um, hot quad sauce lobster boot. Take care of yourselves and um, we can end with a hoi until we meet again. Okay. Hoi. Hoi. Lobster boot. Lobster boot. Hoi.